I use various modalities to assist clients in understanding and releasing emotional trauma. Modalities include cosmic breath work, somatic trauma release, plant medicine, yoga, and meditation. Recently in the Cosmic Mind Shift course, question came up around how trauma affects the brain development with reference to a visual adapted from the professors Holt and Jordan, uh, explaining how trauma affects the brain's development in comparison to typical brain development structure. Let's first look at the brain. The neocortex is the analytical thinking part of the brain, the cognition part. In a healthy human or a healthy environment where one is implementing the tools to minimize and manage stress, this part of the brain is functioning well and our cognitive ability is high. We're able to be calm and responsive instead of reactive. When these tools are not implemented and when a person is under high levels of stress are in a survival state. And that means the reptilian brain, that fight flight is taking over. Our nervous system is in the sympathetic space where it's just wanting to, to survive rather than thrive. Connection, ability to play, learn, imagine, create is stifled and instead we are hypervigilant. That reptilian brain is the part of the brain that is going to regulate the body. In trauma release therapy, we call anything that brings back that story or that memory that's related to a trauma to surface. Okay, so if you've been triggered and it can be a smell, it can be a, someone saying something to you, it can be an action that creates this anxiety within the body, it can be really subtle to this neocortex, the front part of the brain. But to the reptilian part of the brain, it's, it's hypervigilant. So a smell, we're not thinking about this terrible memory. We smell this and immediately we go into a panic attack space. That's because we're operating from the survival component of the brain. When we're using the tools and we're able to stay in the calm space, we have that smell, but the the cognitive part of the brain is firing in such a healthy, good way that I'm able to go, ah, oh, that smell reminds me, I'll talk about myself, it reminds me of boarding school. I'm not going to get into a panicked situational feeling because I know that that's triggering that emotional part of my brain, my limbic brain. Now, if I didn't have that cognitive part of my brain in a high functioning space, the limbic brain would have been triggered by that smell and immediately my reptilian part of the brain would start going into that space of regulation to ensure balance or homeostasis. So the brain is perceiving a threat through that scent and is affecting your body temperature, your hands are getting sweaty, or you're getting the sensations of a panic attack because the brain thinks it needs to fight or flight. Now, if the tools are being implemented around trauma release we're able to tip this triangle over again and the brain will be able to function from the prefrontal and frontal cortex rather than the reptilian brain space when the memory is repeated talk therapy will work a percentage of the time often it actually trigger that emotional part of the brain to get that whole cycle going again and this old story that we're wishing to remove comes up we have the choice to implement different trauma release therapies that would work. Therapies that reframe the story instead of creating that looped pattern, that cyclical thinking around a trauma. May we release it and reframe the story and the memory to reprogram the brain to flip that triangle up so that we can access the cognitive space more efficiently and more effectively through consistent psychosomatic practices. If this made sense and you'd like to learn more of the tools, join our 21-day Mindship training program. The link is below.